Joining us right now is someone with a very personal stake in this fight to try and find a COVID vaccine. Perella Weinberg Partners advisory partner, Walter Isaacson. He's in the Pfizer trial. He's also a professor at Tulane University and a CNBC contributor. And Walter, I had no idea you were in this trial. What happened? When did you get it? What, what kind of side effects did you get, if anything? How do you feel? I feel great, and I feel really great for the country and the world and for Pfizer. Uh, I've been writing a book about RNA, molecular biology, CRISPR, and I was particularly interested in the RNA-type vaccine. So at the end of July, when Pfizer was looking for volunteers to be part of the clinical trial, I just went online and signed up, and it was, some in, was in Louisiana, which is a place where they were really signing people up. And the next day, I got a phone call, went to Ochsner Hospital. And it was a very interesting process. Uh, there was two uh, doctors in there, two female doctors. One of them said, look me right in the eyes. <clears throat> and just as the other one was about to jab me with a needle and I turned to her, the doctor said, no, keep looking me in the eyes. And they said, I said, why? I said, because we don't want you to know whether you've gotten a placebo or the real vaccine. We don't want it to affect your behavior. And she said, I'm not sure you'd be able to tell the difference, but we just want to be sure. Uh, I didn't have any major reaction to it, but, you know, I keep, a, you know, on my phone, which you can't quite see, uh, every few days I keep a vaccine diary, which gets sent in to Pfizer so that they can tabulate results. Walter, I'm just, yeah, I, I was thinking of something. I thought the needle was this long or something was what I thought you were going to say. So don't let, but I'm glad that's not what you were talking about. Okay. So no, it wasn't the size of, and like a thick one, like a garden hose. Oh, you won't feel a thick. No, that was not it. Okay. Whew. No, no. But Joe, you asked a really good question of Dr. Gottlieb, which is why the RNA vaccines might be better than the, you know, deactivated viral vaccines, adenoviruses that you described. And there's such a cool thing about RNA is that I went I to a lab, I went to Jennifer Dowden's lab, and it's easy to just, every time a new virus comes along, because we're going to have more coronaviruses and Walter, other not viruses. Just that, not just that, any protein product that, that someone has because of a genetic mutation that, that they don't produce naturally, if you can prove the proof of concept of inserting that little stretch of nucleic acids that codes for the protein product, this has much more the, uh, potential than just vaccines, too. Bingo. It's not just vaccines, and it is. And by the way, the proof of concept, we've had it for a billion years, at least bacteria have. I mean, that's what CRISPR is, which is bacteria know how to do this. And that's what RNA does. It gets into the outer part of your cell with a code, and it makes a protein. Right. And anybody in a lab now can type up a sequence for whatever protein you want, in this case, it's a spike protein of the coronavirus, so you create antibodies to it. But as you said, if you're missing, if you've got sickle cell anemia, if you've got other things and you need something uh, created for you, having a messenger RNA that somebody can uh, gen up in a lab within hours, it's a miracle of molecular biology. Why? Hey, Walter, just really quickly, you still don't know if you, are, if you got the, the actual vaccine or just the placebo, right? Right. Uh, we had to sort of make a pledge that we weren't going to try to find out. They did give us assurances that as soon as they get authorization, you get unblinded and you get the vaccine right away if you were in the placebo thing. That's in order to make sure people cool. will join trials. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.